Louis Breger of France hinged the rotor blades of his gyroplane using universal joints. It was far more controllable than previous helicopters, but the rotors still turned in opposite directions. And in 1935, this arrangement brought disaster. The idea of hinging the rotor blades originated with Juan de la Sierva, the Spanish pioneer. He invented another type of aircraft with a rotary wing, the autogyro. As well as a propeller, it had a rotor overhead which turned freely due to the forward motion of the aircraft. Its takeoff and landing run were very short, but it could not hover over a fixed point. The future of the Autogyro looked promising. It seemed to be the ideal popular aircraft. Senor Juan de la Sierra was a Spaniard who wanted to build an aeroplane that wouldn't stall. That was his original thought, I think. And he realized that if the wings could be made to go round and round, that they would maintain speed. And uh, if they glided around in the same way the sycamore seed does, that they wouldn't stop, even though the aeroplane was stationary. He made a number of experiments, but he quickly realized one thing was that the blade that is going forward through the air on this, this aeroplane with a rotary wing would have to be allowed to climb or to somehow compensate for the fact that it was giving more lift than the blade that was going backwards through the air. And he eventually developed what we now call the articulated rotor head, which is the key to success of the helicopter. He really solved most of the problems that would otherwise have beset the helicopter. Once the riddle of the helicopter had been solved, interest in the Autogyro declined. But today, Ken Wallace has taken up Sierra's dream. I see the Autogyro as the smallest practical working aircraft. The small scale appeals to me. The fact that in minutes it can be on a trailer behind the car, taken to a site where one needs to operate, but it can lift three times its own weight, which is a tremendous weight ratio. And this little machine could fly for 11 hours non-stop if one were prepared to put up with the noise and discomfort. Autogyro's greatest asset is it is completely stable, naturally stable. And it's possible to fly the Autogyro in such a relaxed manner that you can attend to another task, which is the primary task of the mission. The other quite important thing is that if the engine should stop, then the rotors still keep turning. It doesn't mean that it stays up because you've got to look for somewhere to land it, but at least the rotors still keep turning. I think the autogyro hasn't had the success of the helicopter uh, in the post-30s because uh, the helicopter could do so many tricks that the autogyro couldn't do. It can actually take off vertically and it can land vertically and obviously it can hover and go sideways and backwards and so forth. But you do pay a very big price for that. I believe that the Autogyro is a, a member of the family of aircraft. It doesn't have to compete with the helicopter. It fits in as part of the family.